Hi, I'm Kevin from Stropro.com and today I'm going to give you an overview of the new XT Pro transmitter. So small but important point, when we're installing this we're going to want to make sure that the uh, screw is all the way back because there's a little uh, pin that drops into your hot shoe so we want to make sure that is retracted otherwise there's a possibility of bending it. So once that's ready we'll just pop it onto the hot shoe and turn the wheel the opposite way so that it locks. So guys, this controller works with any of our X-Series lights, so the X60 speed lights, the X35s, X X200, X360, X600, anything with an X in its name, more or less, is going to work with this. <laughs> so uh, I have here an X60 speed light, so I'm just going to briefly show you how to pair it together um, with the controller. I'm going to turn that on. By default, you should see this screen. This is the Canon one, so it says ETTL. Uh, I'm just going to hit the master slave selector, which is the uh, far right button. And I'm going to cycle through the optical master, the optical slave, radio master, radio slave. You see here it says slave, and then you've got a channel and a group. By default, that's going to be channel 1 and group A. This is also going to default to channel 1, so we'll just use that for now. If we do want to change the channel, uh, you can do that by long pressing this button here. It says zoom and channel. So the first function on any of these uh, changeable buttons is going to be uh, short press, and the second function, a long press. So in this case, long press to change the channel. But we're going to leave that on one. Uh, the only re reason to really change that would be if you were in an environment with other people using uh, our radio system and you didn't want to interfere with their gear. You'd use a whole separate channel. But we'll just use channel one. So I can just jump right into the functions here. Uh, we have this guy set to group A. The cool thing about this new controller is we have a button for each group. So that makes it a uh, really nice user interface. So if I want to change A, I'm just going to hit the button right next to A. Right now I see uh, two dashes, that means the group is turned off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the mode button, and we can cycle between TTL, manual, and then off again. So I'm just going to choose a manual power for now. Let's press that twice, it's showing 1128. Um, so both of these are on channel 1, now I've put group A onto 1128 power. I can hit the test button here, you can see the flash says 1128 power. If I want to change that again, right now I'm still highlighting the group so I can just dial the power up. I can go all the way up to 1 over 1, which is full power. Hit the test button again. Responds. Um, and we've got access to five different groups here. So if I had other flashes, I could set some on B, C, D, and have them at different powers. Or I could set them on the same group if I wanted them to be on the same power. Makes it really simple. This is the X60C, so it is TTL capable. Um, I can switch the mode to TTL, and that's going to give you an automatic flash power. So if I turn my camera on now, I can take a shot, and we're gonna get an automatic power from the flash. One really cool new feature about the uh, XT Pro controller versus our old ones is the TCM function. Uh, what that does is I can take a test shot in TTL and then I can hold the TCM button, which is located right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to convert that TTL group to a manual power. In this case, it seemed to think we needed full power. So that probably has to do with my camera settings. But yeah, that's a really great way of um, basically metering on the fly and then having a power that you can use consistently after taking a TTL shot. So we have these four lower buttons here. Uh, the functions of them can change depending on which menu screen we're on. The first button here is a zoom in channel. Then I have the sync mode. Um, I have this button, which is all. That's kind of interesting. If I was to enable a B group as well, I can hit the all button. I can dial the power up and down by the same amount, selecting all groups that are available. Um, the last button is the modeling lamp. The speed light doesn't have one, but if you are using um, our X200, X600, or any of our X Pro strobes, you can cycle the modeling lamp on and off. Um, that'll be for all, all available groups, though. We can't control that individually unless you uh, do that on the light. Um, let's go back here to the zoom. 
This is new. Um, you can actually change the zoom of each group independently. So this would be a feature for your speed lights. The speed light zoom is just the angle at which the light is going to be cast. Uh, it's expressed in millimeters because you can match that to your lens. Um, you can set this to auto, in fact, and that's going to match the angle of view to whatever your lens is. Um, however, once your speed light is off camera, that's not necessarily going to be helpful. But yeah, I can go through A, B, C, D, E. I can set these all to different zoom settings, which is kind of nice. Couldn't do that before with the old controller. Okay, so uh, the next one here is the sync function. This you probably don't have to worry about if you have a, a modern camera. Um, but what I just did there is I turned on the high speed sync. Uh, with newer cameras, what will happen when you pass your shutter um, flash sync speed, it's going to automatically put this into high speed sync. Uh, and then if I hit the sync button again, it gives me second curtain. Same thing, you're probably not gonna have to worry about that. Um, but if you did have issues with that on your camera, then you can hard set it in here. The alternate function of the mode button down here is uh, the lock feature. So if I didn't want to change my settings, I can set this to be locked. You just long press it and you'll see right here it says locked. Now I can't make any changes to this until I unlock it by long pressing the button once again. Below that we have the test button, which I showed already, but that's going to be handy, especially if you use a light meter. Um, next up, we have the menu button. Actually, we'll tackle that last. The TCM button, which I showed you, that's a long press to use that. So again, if I take a test shot, uh, I'm gonna need one of these to be in TTL. So let's switch that up. Oops. Okay. Now I can take a test shot. I can long press this button to use the TCM function. Once again, it converted it to one over one. Um, if I short press this button, that's going to zoom in on whichever group I've selected. So if you're really working with just one flash group, you can have a larger view of it. I can change the power there. Uh, so that's kind of handy. Press this to zoom back out. So lastly, I guess we'll just go through the menu. Uh, what's really nice about this controller is the custom functions aren't really buried. We have more of a traditional menu system, which is nice. So if I hit the menu button here, we'll have access to that. So the first one here, this is the standby. I have it turned off. So uh, what can happen if you have this off is after one minute, the controller will go into standby just to save power. Uh, a half press of your shutter will wake it up. Next up is going to be the beep function. So this is going to be the ready beep for all of your flashes, speed lights, strobes, doesn't matter. You can disable that or enable it, whatever your preference is. Um, next up, we have the minimum power setting. So this is just the minimum that's going to show up in manual power. We do have uh, our X600 II, which has a nine f-stop range, meaning that it will go down to one 256 power. So if you have one of those, you're going to want to select that just to have access to that minimum power. Otherwise, we're going to keep that on 1128. Next up, we have the uh, light. So this is the backlight. Um, you can set it to turn off after 12 seconds. You can have it off all the time, or you can just leave it on all the time. I'll put it on 12 seconds just to save power. I only really need the backlight on when I'm actually making adjustments. Um, so next up we have the sync. Now this is referring to the sync port, which is on the side. Um, it's a 2.5 millimeter pin. You uh, can change the function of that to be an input or an output. So if you were, if you had another flash for, that you were using uh, through the sync port, it's not on our system, maybe it's an older strobe or something, you would have this set to out. Um, Otherwise, if you want had maybe a light meter plugged into here and you wanted um, to be able to trigger the test with it, you would set this to in. But that's not generally gonna matter um, unless you have one of those very specific needs. Next up, we have the group setting. So uh, some of our other strobes, like our X-Pro strobes, they have access to more just the A through E. They also can do one through nine, so they have more groups available. Um, 
that's going to be pretty niche for most people, but it could matter to you a lot. So yeah, you can enable those other groups in the controller. Otherwise, for simplicity, you're going to want to leave this on the uh, five groups. Next up, we've got the LCD contrast. Now, first time I saw this, I wasn't really noticing anything, but once you scroll through here, you will see a very subtle difference. So plus three being, being the most contrast, minus three being the least contrast. Again, not really much of a huge difference as you scroll through there, but it's there. Okay guys, this is the uh, shoot mode. This is a bit interesting. So the single shoot mode is the default. So this is gonna make changes to any of your flashes in real time. Um, this one is the group shoot mode. So this is designed to be uh, used when you're working with um, either a partner or an assistant or someone who's also using one of these controllers. Uh, what this does is it only registers the last uh, setting that was changed. So you have to, you physically make a change on the controller. It registers that settings with the flashes. And then um, anyone else who's using their controller, regardless of what power they have it set to, uh, is gonna use that setting. Until they go and make a change, then that becomes the new default for that uh, light. Uh, if you want more clarity on that, definitely give us a call here at the store. Uh, we can talk you through it. Um, the last thing on here is the app mode. Now this is for use with the uh, Godox A1. Uh, we should eventually have our own version of that. It, if you haven't heard of it, it's a pretty interesting device. Um, the app mode basically turns this into a dummy trigger. So it's only gonna trigger your lights without changing the power. Um, that's because the app used by the Godox A1 would be taking over the controls for the flash if, if you were using it with one of these controllers. So that's some, some exciting stuff and we'll definitely have more on that later for you. Um, now we're down to the distance mode. So the controller has two distance modes. The first is one to 100 meters. Right now, um, having this flash so close, depending on your environment, you might find that the flash is really, really spotty um, if you're in this mode. I haven't had any problems, but that might come up. So if it does, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and switch this to the zero to 30 meters. And then you're gonna be shooting a lot more re reliably at those close distances. This is the ID function. Now this, probably something you're never gonna to touch, but what it allows you to do is have access to a whole bunch of more channels. So if you happen to be on a photo walk with more than 32 people all using this flash system and all needing their own separate powers, there you go, there's a whole bunch of more groups for you. And this works with uh, the latest firmware on all of our flashes. Pretty niche feature, but again, it's there. <laughs> Lastly, the TCM function. So you can actually cater the TCM to whichever type of flash you're using. So right now it's set to the speed light. That's what I was using. If you want more accurate readings from that TCM function and you're using an X200, for example, you're gonna put that onto 200. Uh, the, there's also a setting for the X360 and the X600. Um, really, uh, I've, I've noticed that no matter what I have this set to, it seems to be pretty reliable. But if you want to really kind of narrow in on that and get the most accurate reading possible, that's what that's for. So on the right side of the controller here, you're gonna see two switches. This is the on-off switch, pretty self-explanatory. This front one is actually the focus assist beam. You can toggle that on and off. Uh, it, your camera is still only gonna use it when it thinks it needs it. It just helps out in low light. It's gonna project a little red grid that helps your camera focus. So that can be really handy, especially if you're in a studio environment that's a little darker and you need some help focusing. And on the left side of the controller here, we see a little rubber flap. If we remove that, we have the uh, USB-C port. This is for firmware updates. Uh, and below that, we have the 2.5 millimeter sync port. So guys, I hope you found the overview of our uh, XT Pro controller informative. There's a lot of nice UI changes to this guy when compared to the old XT controller. And we're gonna have one of these for every single one of the camera systems that we currently support. Yeah, it's exciting stuff, just anything that makes your life easier. And I think this controller really does. 
Um, so yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching and until next time.